Welcome to the bonus lecture and in this lecture we will cover an important topic of C++ language and we will look forward what to do next once we are done with this course. Which steps to take? So let's move ahead. First of all, congratulations once again on completing the course successfully. Now topic of the lecture that I am going to give as bonus is how to create your own header files. We read about the header files in section 2, that is, program structure in C++. And we looked at the header files provided by C++, and we read about the header files created by the programmer. But we did not go into the depth of that because it was a beginner course, and it is usually covered in the advanced courses of C++. But it's an important one, so we will cover it right now in the bonus lecture. To create your own header files is required when we have a large piece of program, for example, 1000 lines of code. So we put some of the code in the header files and we include those header files in our main program. In this way, our program looks simple, easy to understand and easy to maintain. As there are many self-learners, so I have noticed that many students need that guidance of which course to do next after completing the first C++ course for beginners. So I thought of giving good guidance so that students won't be confused about which direction to follow. So first of all, we will cover the bonus lecture and then we will look what to do next after this course. So let's move towards our bonus lecture that is how to create your own header file in C++, which is an extremely important topic and is normally discussed in advanced C++. So now we look at the steps that are required in order to create your own header file. So there are five steps that we need to follow. First of all, I will show you one large program that has a class implemented in that program and the name of the class is video game. And the main function is in the same program. So the class and the main program, they both are in one program, just like we did before in our previous lectures. Next step will be, in order to create our own header file, we will divide the program into three files. main.cpp, videogame.h, and videogame.cpp. Now we look at their details. The first one is main.cpp, which is actually the main program, and all the main program statements are inside this program. Next, the second part is the header file that videogame.h. This header file contains all the declaration of variables and functions in it. So you can say that videogame.h contains all declarations of the concepts we will use in the class. Next, the third header file is cpp file. Its name is videogame.cpp. This file contains the variables initializations and functions code in it. And finally, once we are done with that, we will include the header file videogame.h in the main program in order to recognize the variables and functions used in the program. And also, we will include the header file videogame.h in the cpp file. So why are we including the header file in the cpp file? Well, the answer is we have done this because we know that cpp file contains the implementation of functions in it. So when the variables and functions are used in the video game.cpp file, those variables and functions are recognized by the compiler. If we do not include the header file video game.h in video game.cpp, the compiler will not recognize the variables and the functions used in the video game.cpp file and will consequently give an error. So this is a short description of all the steps that we are going to follow in order to create our own header file. Still, if you have any doubt, we will go to dev C++ and do all the steps over there and then you can understand in case of any doubts. So let's go to dev C++ and create our own header file. So, in this tutorial, first of all, we will write all code in one source file. 
Name of that file will be video game one program dot cpp. This program contains a sample class whose name is video game. This is not some real video game, but it simply shows the structure of the program and has only two functions of the class. One is constructor that initializes the values, and the other is a function that displays a message on the output screen saying welcome. So we start by writing the one last program, video game one program dot cpp, and execute it. After writing this one last program, we will create a new project in Dev C++ in which we will divide the code of this one program, video game one program dot cpp, among three files. How many files? Among three files. The main purpose of this tutorial is to show you how you can divide one large program into three files and then connect them all together to do the job that this one program whose name is video game one program dot cpp is doing. These three files are number one main dot cpp that contains the main function. We are just revising the steps in the previous PowerPoint slide to understand better. So number one is main.cpp. Number two is header file, which is video game.h here. And it contains declarations of class variables and the functions. And lastly, number three, the cpp file apart from main.cpp that contains the functions code. And why are we doing this? Because it is a good approach to program a class like that. Rather than writing all code in one CPP file, when we are dealing with thousand lines of programs or more, header file approach is better for large projects as they are easy to understand and easy to maintain. Or you can say that we are using the approach divide and conquer. So now we are in Dev C++. So what we will do is that First of all, we will create that one large program whose name is video game one program dot cpp that contains the main function and the class video game as well. And after that, we will separate them to show you how you can create a header file and then later include it in your program. So first of all, we will write one program for this purpose. So we go to file and new and then source file. So here we will write the code. So first of all, we will include the header file iostream to support input and output. So we write hash include iostream. Next we will include the header file string because we because we are using a variable that is of string type. So we will use this header file. So we write hash include string. Next we will include the header file conu.h to support function getch. The getch function asks a user to enter any key and once entered, we will go to next statement. We took the work of system pause from getch in this program. Just to show you another way of giving a pause till the user enters key. And the header file conu.h supports this function getch. So we write hash include conu.h. So now we are done with including the header files. So next we will use the namespace std so that we could use c in and c out directly without writing std c in or std c out. So we write using namespace std. So now we are done with header files. So here we will declare the class video game. So we write class.
क्लास वीडियो गेम सो हेयर इज द स्टार्टिंग कर्ली ब्रैकेट एंड हेयर द एंडिंग कर्ली ब्रैकेट ऑफ द क्लास दैट इज फॉलोड बाय अ सेमी कॉलन Next, we add access identifiers, private and public, in the class. In this class, our variables are private, and we declare functions as public. So we write private. Next, we will declare the variables. The first one will store the name of the game, and its name is game name. So we write string game. name and remember that we declared the header file that suppose this string type of variable so next we declare another string variable that stores the type of game so we write string game type next we declare a double variable that stores the price of game so we write double game price next we will add class member functions under public access identifier so we write public for that public first of all we will declare constructor so we write video game as the constructor name is the same as the class name so we write video game and then we write semicolon this is the class constructor next we will add one more member function that is welcome message of return type void as it does not return any value it has one string argument that stores the welcome message that will be printed on the output screen so we write void welcome message as it contains the string argument so we write here string because its type is string so here we are done with the declaration of the class and now we will write the code inside the class functions for the program to work so we come to this point under the class and add functions here first of all we add constructor so we write video game which is actually the class name here and then double colon and then the constructor name that is video game video game and then the starting curly bracket and then here the ending curly bracket here so in constructor we will initialize the variables so we are going to initialize the variables with the values that we want to assign them now game name is let's suppose mini bowling so we write game name is equal to mini bowling semicolon so the game type is arcade so we write game type is equal to arcade and let's suppose game price is 100.25 in our currency so we write game price is equal to 100.25 semicolon so in constructor we have initialized the values and assigned the variables the values that we wanted to assign them next we will write the function welcome message that receives a string and print it on the output screen so we write void as it has the return type void means it does not return anything and then video game which is the name of the class 
double colon and then the name of the member function that is welcome message and we know that it takes and we know that it takes a string as an argument that is actually the welcome message so we write string message starting curly bracket ending curly bracket first of all we print the message using c out so we write c out message so here we are printing the message on the output screen printing welcome message on the output screen next we print the name of the game on the output screen so we write c out backslash n to move to next line to make the output more neat and then name of the game is equal to game name so what is stored in the variable game name here that is mini bowling so mini bowling will be printed here next we print the type of the game on the output screen so we write c out backslash n to move to next line type of the game is equal to game type and next we print the price of the game on the output screen so we write c out backslash n to move to the next line and then price of the game is equal to game price all right so here welcome function ends so here we added code to all functions and next we will write the main function where we will create object of the class and invoke its method to print the welcome message on the screen so we can have a look at the code again these are the header files this is the class video game it has private variables game name game type and game price and it has two member functions the first one is constructor and the second one is welcome message member function now here in constructor we initialize the values to the values we wanted to assign to the variables and in the next function welcome message we simply print the message that is the welcome message on the output screen and then we print the name of the game and then the type of the game and then the price of the game and here the functions end and we are done with writing the class so now after completing class declaration and implementation we write our main function to create class object and call its functions so we write int main starting bracket and in bracket first of all we declare the object of the class video game so we write video game game underscore obj so this is the object of class video game next we call the function welcome message of the class by using the object so we write game underscore obj dot welcome message so the message that we want to print on the output screen is welcome to game so this is the message 
that we printed on the output screen. In this way, welcome to game is the game message that is printed on the output screen. And next we use get ch to give a break like we did using system pause. So rather than using system pause, which does not run on all compilers of C++, so we write get ch. So get ch asks the user to enter any key. When the user enters the key, then the next statement is return 0. So main function returns. So here get ch is working like system system pause statement here. So here main ends. So now we need to save the project. So we click here on this button save and then we type the name of the program that is video game one program video game one program we are not going to write dot cpp because the extension is already here so we do not need to write it here and we just save it now our program is saved and let's execute it so we go to execute compile and run to check if there are any errors and if there are no errors the program will be executed okay there's a semicolon by mistake so again we try So thank God the program does not have any error and here we can see the output that is welcome to game. Name of the game is mini bowling and the, the, and the type of the game is arcade and price of the game is 100.25. So this is that one program that contains all the code. The main purpose of this tutorial is to show you how you can divide this one program that contains the code into three files and then connect them all together to do the job that this one program video game one program dot cpp is doing so in the previous program we created a class video game and then we showed our welcome message on the output screen using that so what we are going to do right now is that we will divide that one program into three files and in that we will create our own header file so the program will be divided into three files. One is the main.cpp that contains the main function. The second is the header file that is our own header file which we will create. And we will include it later in our program. And the third one is cpp file that contains the code of functions. So main.cpp contains main function. Header file contains the declaration of variables and functions and cpp file contains the implementation of those functions all right so we divide the program one program so we divide the one large program into three files and then you can include the header file in your main program and in this way we will learn how to create our own header file and how we can include that in the main program and how we can divide one large program into different parts and then include them in our program and make it work. So first of all, we will go to DevC++ and we will go to file. So we are going to create a new project to create our own header file. And this project contains three files, just like I explained to you before. So we go to file and then new, and then we will come to project. So, here we will type the name of the project. The name of the project is video game and click on the console application because it is a console application and make sure that C++ project is checked. And once again, 
The name of the project is Video Game. Now click OK. Now we will mention where will we save the project. So we will go to bin, dev C++ bin and here we will create a folder whose name is video game and we will save our project in that. So from here we can create a new folder video game and then we double click it go inside that so that our all files are saved in that and we just save it. So now the project is created and we can see the name of the project over here. So we can see main.cpp under the project video game. This is the class that contains the main function as you can see over here. So when I was working with this main.cpp class there was a problem in connecting the three files header file, cpp file and main.cpp. So I am simply deleting it and I will recreate the class that contains the main function. In that way the project was working for me. So right click main.cpp and we simply click on remove file. And now it says that save changes so we simply click here no. Ok now we save it. Now after removing main.cpp class. What we will do here is that we will create new classes. These classes include the following classes just like we discussed in the bonus lecture PowerPoint video. So we are going to add classes which are main.cpp as I just explained that main.cpp class contains the main function or you can say the main program in which we will include header file.cpp file. Secondly, we will create header file. Yes, our own header file and not to forget that header file contains declaration of variables and functions. And thirdly, we will create the cpp file that contains the variable initializations and complete functions code. To add classes, we will click here on classes. Now we will right click and click on new class. To add classes, we will click here on the classes. So here you can write the name of the class that is video game. So we write video game. So here we can see that dev C++ automatically creates header file that is video game dot h and video game dot cpp with the same name as the class that is video game. But in class name, v and g are capital whereas in header file and cpp file v and g are small letters. So make sure that add to current project is checked and then we will click on create to create the project. So here you can see that this is the header file and this is the .cpp file. So first of all we go to header file this is the header file that contains declaration of the class and if you are wondering what is this if define video game age hash define and in the end we have hash and if. You do not need to panic this is simply added to make sure that if header file is defined twice then compiler does not give an error means if we write hash include video game dot age twice by mistake while including it in our main program then the compiler will not give error. These are known as file guards and if we do not include it then compiler will give this error that header file is redefined. It is a good programming practice to include those file guards so you should never miss while writing code in a header file. So next we look at the cpp file. So here you can see that the class name is here and constructor is declared, destructor is declared if needed. And if we want to add more functions, we can declare them over here. So header file only contains declarations. So next we look at the cpp file that is video game dot cpp file that contains actual code of functions and variables initializations. So after creating header and cpp file, 
you must be wondering where is main.cpp. So we will create a class main.cpp that contains the main program that will include those header file and cpp file. So in order to create main.cpp, we right click the project name and then we will click on new file. So as you can see, the name is untitled. Okay. So we will save it to give the name main.cpp. In order to save this, we will click on the save button. And we do not need to write .cpp because extension is already over here. So we simply click on save. So now you can see main.cpp, video game.h and video game.cpp. So now we save the so now we come to header file and we save it in the folder video game in the bin folder of dev c++. So again we click on the save button and as you can see we are already inside the bin folder and inside the folder video game. The name is already here and we simply save it. And then we will go to video game.cpp and we will click on the save button to save it. So here is the name and as we can see the extension is already here. So we will simply click on save. So after adding all three files, we will add code to the classes main.cpp, header file that is video game.h and cpp file that is video game.cpp one by one to distribute code among different classes. Rather than using one class which is a good practice and the program is easy to maintain. At the same time, we will open that one large program that we previously wrote so that we could copy code from there and divide that code into three classes. So we open that file, open, and then we go to bin and its name was video game, one program, it's already selected, so we click open. Now this is also opened in our project, but remember this is not part of the project. We simply opened it to copy text from here and paste it into our classes and we will close it later. So this is the one large program. Now first of all, we will copy the declarations from here and paste it to the header files. First of all, we will work with string class. So we will add header file string. So we write hash include string. Remember every time you will add a header file, you will add it under the file guards. So these are the file guards. Next we will add using namespace std. So we write using namespace std semicolon. Now this is the class video game declared in the header file. So now we will see which variables to declare. As we can see that there is no private access identifier. So we will write it private colon. And here we will and here and here we will copy the variables declared from that one large program and paste it over here. So these are the variables. We simply copy it, go to the header file again and paste it here. And we can format according to our requirements. As we know that the variable game name stores the name of the game and game type stores the type of the game and game price stores the price of the game. So we have declared the variables here. Now we will declare the function. As we know that constructor is already declared here, so we will not write it again. And remember, we will simply declare the functions and variables here. And their detailed code will be stored in this video game.cpp file. So again, we go to header file. As the constructor is already here, so we need to add the second function that is welcome message. 
So, so we will go to video game one program dot cpp and copy only the declaration of function welcome message here. So we simply copy it, copy, and then we go to header file and paste the declaration over here, and we also save it. So now after completing header file video game dot h, which contained only declarations, we will go to video game dot cpp file to see how variables are working over there and write the codes in the functions of the class. So now we are here in video game dot cpp. As you can see, the header file video game dot h is already included in the file video game dot cpp to recognize the variables and functions. So here you can see hash include video game dot h. Now here we will add the constructor code here and this is the destructor. Function welcome message string is missing here so we will add it after including header files. So first of all we will include header file iostream. So we write hash include io stream then we write using namespace std so using name name space std now we will go to now we will go to video game one program dot cpp and copy the constructor code from here so we simply copy it and go to video game dot cpp as i told you that cpp file contains the variables initializations and functions detailed code so here we go to constructor and we simply paste the code so here we can see that game name is mini balling game type is arcade and game price is 100.25 next we will add function welcome message string so we go to video game one program dot cpp and copy the whole function from here. So we select it, right click, copy, and then we go to dot cpp file, and then we can add it over here. Simply right click and paste. So now the code of constructor and the code of the function welcome message both are added here. So now we are going to save it again to save the changes that we made. So now we completed the header file that is video game dot h that contains the declarations and the cpp file that is video game dot cpp by adding variables initializations and functions code and now we will go to main dot cpp and add the code in that. So first of all we will include the header file video game dot h in the main class that contains the main function so that we can recognize the variables that are declared in the header file. So we write hash include video game dot h. Now here we are using the double quotes rather than the ankle brackets to tell the compiler that the header file lies in the same folder or directory where the main.cpp lies and which was the folder that is the folder of video game that was placed in the bin folder of devc++ next we will include the header file iostream so we write hash include iostream Next, we will include the header file conio.h. Conio.h that supports the function getch that we will use in the program. So we write hash include conio.h. Conio.h supports function getch that asks a user to enter any key, and once entered, we will go to next statement that is return zero. We took the work of system pause from getch here in this program because it works on all compilers of C++ whereas system pause 
does not work on some compilers of C++. Next we write using name space std. Now we start main function. So we go to video game one program dot cpp and copy main code from there and paste here. So this is the main function. We will simply copy it and go to main dot cpp and paste it here. And remember that just like we did in this video game one program, we will create object of the class video game. Then we will call the welcome message and then we will use get ch which is working like system pause statement here and then the main function will be returned and it will be ended. So now all files are completed so we save them one by one to make sure that all the data or all the changes are saved. Main save video game dot cpp save okay we click on save all so as we can see that we have declarations in header file video game dot h and video game dot cpp contains the variables initializations and functions code and main dot cpp that contains the main function so now we are done with adding all the three files so we will simply close this one large program I am doing this just to make you more clear that this is not part of our project. So we simply close it. Now we run the program by clicking compile and run. Compile and run and congratulations our program executed without any errors. You can see the same output that welcome to game. The name of the game is mini bowling. Type of the game is arcade and price of the game is 100.25 and as soon as we press any key we will go back to devc++ so this is how you can create your own header file and include it in your program and it is a good practice to put the function code and variable initialization in a separate class so we added the class video game.cpp as well to work in a more professional way thank you so much for your time i hope you enjoyed the lecture Thanks again.